every leather daddy's favorite horror movie. It's Hellraiser. Here we are. We're talking about the very first film. I'll be honest too, I'm pretty unfamiliar with this franchise. I've only ever seen this first movie and I thought to rewatch it in preparation to check out this new one that's coming out on Hulu. So the Hellraiser series from Clive Barker, it's, I don't, I don't even know how many movies it is, nine? The series deals with these cosmic demons called the Cinnabites, I think, Cinnabites? It sounds like Cinnabon. Anyways, cosmic space demons, they're summoned by this puzzle box that people use to, and I think it's, oh, to gain everlasting life, something, power? There's like a whole ritual and you open the puzzle box, but then they come after you, Pinhead being one of them. Although in this first movie, he's not like the main one. I think he's the only one who talks. It's one of these scenarios where I think Pinhead kind of became the face of the franchise, so he's more focused on in the later movies. The box. You opened it. We came. It's just a puzzle box! Oh no. It is a means to summon us. Who are you? Explorers in the further regions of experience. But anyways, once they're after you, they're after you, and they're going to show you things that the mind cannot comprehend and then kill you at the end of it. So... The journey parts actually seems a little unnecessary, but what do I know? I've only seen one of them. I think this is a very interesting uh, concept. Uh, it's very original. Well, it's cosmic horror is really what it is. Uh, like Lovecraft adjacent, I would say. Uh, maybe inspired, but uh, I really dig the design of these guys and, and that horror aspect works really well for me. I'm also really intrigued by the romantic element in this movie. So the, the main characters are a married couple, but uh, the husband doesn't know that his wife, right before they got married, uh, slept with his brother. And his brother's actually the one who opens the puzzle box and he becomes like, this this goopy monster. It's a movie that's also, I mean, as much as it is about cosmic horror, is also about infidelity. And the wife is unfulfilled, and this really motivates her actions, which are, are, are horrific, really, uh, in order to chase this man, but she doesn't see that he is completely uninterested. Like, I understand the bad boy trope, but, I mean, girl, you gotta reel it in. This guy is, is not a good pick. He just isn't. Now, all these concepts and themes are really interesting, but then I think the plot, like, the more tangible part, some of the dialogue isn't all that great. And then on top of that, sometimes the movie feels like it's just maybe going on for a little too long, but then we're introduced into like the new victims, for instance, they just kind of show up. We're missing some like interlinking scenes that I think would make this feel a little more cohesive. Honestly, I felt a little bored at points in the movie, but I do have to say that when it does really get into the horror aspects, I am like a thousand percent on board. <laughs> fantastic practical effects. We get a lot of cool stuff that's like reverse shots in this movie to help show something growing or like decaying. Those look really good. One aspect that really stands out to me is the blood, which is it's just really bright red contrast very well with the dark and drab house with the rest of the setting. It's, it's just really nice and very bold. Five Parker just knows how to make a great visual movie and, and I kept thinking about Candyman a lot while watching this one. They both have that very kind of otherworldliness to them. They both also have that sense of like eroticism in the story. Well, let me know what you think about Hellraiser and let me know if you have any requests. Uh, schedule's filling up, so get them in soon. Okay.